Thank you so much. It's easy to lure me back to Cambridge uh, because I was a resident here for 30 years uh, and uh, worked at uh, Litauer just ac across the street. Uh, and uh, now I'm uh, at Columbia University, but always uh, thinking and admiring this community and, uh, and your leadership. I have 20 minutes to tell you about the state of the world, which uh, <laughs> rem reminds me a little bit of the old uh, Russian joke uh, that uh, they ask Yeltsin, how are things? He said, good. Well, Mr. President, could you elaborate? Okay, not good. Uh, so, how are things? Actually, not good. Uh, we're, we're in trouble. Uh, which is why I came here today. Uh, I'm on a furlough uh, of two days between uh, international trips last week uh, to uh, South America, followed by Central Europe uh, and the Vatican, uh, and then home yesterday and leaving on Tuesday for China. And uh, I, but I wanted to be here because uh, I really admire what you're doing, but I also want you to do more. Uh, and uh, maybe one thing to do more is to have all of you take some uh, responsibility to reach out to schools, to the wonderful kids that are fast becoming our leaders and moral conscience, uh, because they're, they really are saying no BS to the sons of bitches that run this country right now. And, and we really need their voices and we need the energy. And I wish I could tell you, okay, things are on the upswing and everything's gonna be fine, but uh, everything is in the balance right now. We have probably for the first time in our history, maybe second or third time, but not more than that, a mentally ill president. He is clinically mad. He is a delusional, narcissist, megalomaniac, unstable, and can absolutely destroy this planet. And we cannot just hope. We have to take every step to face this reality. It's not been this bad in modern history. And it's very dangerous because he is obviously not in control of his own mentation. He is not in control of reality. And because of the corrupt Congress that we have, no one stands up. This is a, we are in the depths of our politics right now. Congress is absolutely bought. You look at what's just happened. I, I thought it was bad enough having uh, ExxonMobil own the State Department. Uh, <laughs> not, now, we have, now we have the Koch brothers that own it, pure and simple. Mike Pompeo is pure and simple, a bought politician of David and Charles Koch, and has been all along. And this is a wonderful country. Money can buy you everything. It can buy you the US Senate. It can buy you the Republican Party. We know that it can buy a lot of bots on social media that absolutely uh, undermined our democracy. I'm wondering whether we can have a class action suit against Facebook, because Mark Zuckerberg didn't learn manners here at Harvard. Uh, and, and Facebook did incredible damage last year. Today, there's another story about how they bought and Facebook sold personal data of millions of people to this uh, Cambridge Analytica, which was the Bannon operation. Our data, which they use to manipulate our democracy, and Facebook says, oh, I'm sorry, we didn't notice. Because all they want to do is make money, even if it completely suborns our democracy. 
so that's why I'm here, because we have to get organized. I note you have a popular Republican governor. I don't know him personally. Go please talk to him to stand up and say the Republican Party does not have to be to say publicly that he repudiates Trump, that he repudiates this destruction of democracy, that he repudiates the attack on science, that he repudiates tax cuts for the super rich. I don't know this man, but he's apparently popular and a moderate. And that's the kind of Republicans we once had. We're down to a small number of them. Maybe that's not true. But go to the State House, please. See if this guy's for real. Because we need people to stand up and say, we're not going to let the US go down the drain because of a nut who got there with completely unprincipled behavior. And we've never seen anything like the corruption that is underway throughout the government. I was in India three weeks ago, and uh, there was Donald Trump Jr. full page ads coming to sell his condos. You just cannot even believe how crude these people are, how completely disgusting they are. And we cannot normalize it, ladies and gentlemen. We can't let this be normal. And that's why we have to say what it is. And we have a man with an illness who needs treatment and who does not have adult supervision because the so-called adults in the room are all generals and do not rely on the generals for peace. And now we have, I'm just reading the news this moment that uh, it'll be the CIA that manages the uh, North Korea summit. That is a disaster. There is no more failed organization in American history than the CIA. No organization that has gotten us into more trouble, that has created more instability, that has caused more wars, that has caused more destruction than the CIA. By the way, just as an example, what are we doing in Syria? Have you heard an honest account from anybody? Have you read one coherent account in the New York Times, our paper? No. Nor any place else. You're told it's a civil war. That's no civil war. This was an attempt by the CIA together with Saudi Arabia in early 2011 to overthrow a government which went disastrously wrong because lo and behold, that government had friends, Russia and Iran. And so I'm sure the CIA told Mr. Obama, don't worry, we'll get it done, 30 days. And we are now seven years later, half a million people dead, 10 million people displaced, and we still don't have an honest accounting of what happened. And we're still told lies. And the Pentagon says, we're just going to keep troops in Syria. Did the Syrians ask? Is that consistent with the UN Charter? Of course not. Did the Congress vote on it? Of course not. Do we have a functioning democracy in our country? No, we don't. We have the facsimile of one. We have no control, practically speaking, over war and peace right now. We've spent probably about $6 trillion on the wars in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria. No accounting. Even for a macroeconomist like me, that's some change. That's not small stuff. We could have had our kids in decent schools. We could have ended the student debt on a whole generation of young people. 
We could have easily extended health care for all. But boom, it all went up in war to kill people. Trillions of dollars completely unaccounted. And by the way, I'm sorry to tell you it's both parties, though the Republicans are far more disgusting and far more corrupt. The Democrats at least wring their hands when they do it. <laughs> Obama led us into war after war, kept the wars going, kept the troops in Afghanistan, entered the war in Syria, never explained to the American people, never told us about his presidential directives to the CIA, ordering the CIA to partner with Saudi Arabia to overthrow the Assad regime. You haven't heard it till this day. We just haven't had a proper accounting to this day. NATO overthrowing Gaddafi, opening up civil war in Libya, all of this creating massive refugee movements that have destabilized Europe. It's both parties. Though, as I say, the current situation is beyond anything we've seen. And the American people do not understand, unfortunately. And it's so hard to find the truth and it's so hard to get a clear accounting. And this is done in our name. Fundamentally, we're stuck on a very bad, stupid idea, which has been part of our country's idea for a long time. And that is that we are somehow ordained to run the show globally. And that we're the unrivaled power and that we're the kindly nation, and so we create Pax Americana, except, unfortunately, it's P-O-X, not P-A-X. <laughs> Where's the peace? We're in nonstop war. We're still in war in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Syria, in Libya, all across Africa. The hotels in Africa, and see US troops there saying, whoa, that's interesting. What are you doing here? Well, we're on a mission. And the drones are flying, and we have no accountability at all. We have no sense. The Constitution says that it is Congress that has the power to declare war. We have no declarations of war. We have no oversight. And it's both parties that are terrified of responsibility and shame. I was in a Washington meeting last month and there came Nancy Pelosi and she said, of course, we need to make sure they don't squeeze the domestic budget, but we agree that we're going to increase the defense budget because we have to stand with our young men and women in uniform. You want to stand with them? Bring them home. I'm really thrilled to be here with Sabina Martin, and uh, she's going to talk in just a moment uh, about uh, the Poor People's Campaign. And we are, of course, at the 50th anniversary of the Poor People's Campaign and of losing two of our three greatest leaders of uh, the, the last half century, Robert uh, Kennedy and Martin Luther King, uh, just at the 50th anniversary these weeks and John F. Kennedy uh, a few years before that. They killed the best that were leading the way out of this mess that knew that we had to turn away from the military, that we needed peaceful solutions, that under understood that the Cold War was a disaster and that the hot war in Vietnam was a useless, ridiculous, hopeless, tragic, war of no purpose for us, which is exactly what it proved to be. And they killed 
the three. But what is most uh, important of what we take from the campaigns of Martin Luther King and Robert Kennedy 50 years ago is that they understood that we need a holistic approach that aims to fight militarism and to fight poverty, and that it's the two together that's absolutely vital to reorient our country. I can tell you as an economist, this country has everything. This country has more wealth, more technology, great institutions uh, like the one down the block across this country. We've got everything and we're blowing it. We're blowing it. We're letting the prosperity and the peace and the decency fall through our fingers. We're failing to know we made it and now use it decently, live morally, live ethically, be responsible. Instead, we have the idea we need to run the world. You know what? The world does not want to be run by the United States. It doesn't need to be run by the United States. It needs to find the U.S. not as leader. We are not the indispensable country. We are not the last great hope of the planet. We're one part of the world where all over the world people yearn for peace, decency, a measure of well-being, societies that function, and not being swept away by environmental destruction. That's what people want. And we need to take the campaign from 50 years ago and make it our campaign now. And the time is extraordinarily short. And we need to be very clear, as clear as the kids are. No BS. No crazy people as president. No more wars out of the madness of our so-called defense establishment, which I call our offense establishment, because I don't know if there's any defense about it. It's all offense. We need to understand we're at the end of the line to keep the climate safe. We're past the line. And yet, we've got a president drill everything everywhere, get as much carbon dioxide into the air, wreck the planet as fast as possible. These people are mad. They're evil. They are. They're greedy SOBs, and they're on the take. That's all it is. And the Koch brothers are the two leaders. Rupert Murdoch, add in, one of the most disgusting people on the planet, an absolutely mentally ill president, and a completely corrupt Congress. That's our charge. It's not easy. This is tough. And we're not winning. We haven't been winning for a long time. And we have lost so much time. And we're at the verge of more wars. They can't wait to have a war with Iran. I have a rule which I'd like to suggest for uh, mass peace, which is I have a principle which I would like to get adopted, that America's not allowed to go to war with any country unless at least half the American people can name two cities in that country. <laughs> my, my, my view is this would put an end to all war. <laughs> Just a basic stipulation. We don't need a war with Iran. God forbid, and it still absolutely can happen, a war with North Korea. The continuing wars in Syria where you can't even say what it's about, but we're still fighting, not ISIS. ISIS isn't even there anymore. We're funding the rebels to still take territory from Assad. We're still fighting Obama's war. All we're doing is leading to the mass destruction of Syria because now it's a proxy war with Russia. It's mind-bogglingly stupid. So I wanted to come here to say thank you and to tell you I am completely in any way I can help. I want to continue. I want you, because this is a great, very important organization, reach young people, reach comparable 
efforts around the country. Join the Poor People's Campaign because we need to fight both poverty and militarism. And let's not lose any moment. Let's not uh, lose any energy. This is really a moment of truth for this country. Thank you very much. for some continued discussion. Oh, good. Great. Please. Um, I, I listen. Stand, stand up. Hi, I'm Tom Answer. Tommy. Um, I listen to what you say, and I, actually, I delight in reading what you write in the Globe periodically. And as I listen this morning, what I, I, I think I hear, which is kind of what I sort of knew, that the real stakes are that people like the Congresswoman from California care about the military jobs in the factories that, that, that are in her district. And I, I was amazed every time Donald Trump walks out of a foreign country, there's a deal that's been made. He's selling arms. He's the biggest arms broker in the world. Absolutely. And it's just so The basic idea of our country right now, of our political system, is that we're in the hands of a few powerful lobbies that absolutely are against the public interest and are absolutely against the majority of Americans. And what are they? One is the military, military establishment, the military industrial complex and our weapons industry, including uh, the uh, assault uh, weapons and so on. That's number one. The American people overwhelmingly want gun control and overwhelmingly want peace, but we don't get it because of powerful vested interests. Second is Wall Street. Look who runs economic policy. It's been Goldman Sachs for the last 25 years. I wrote about that last week. It's been one disaster after another. They're not in the interest. It's a different sax, by the way. Uh, I, have found, I, 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 I have found no link. I've looked, you know. <laughs> I could endow this organization, but alas, no. Uh, but you've had one after another Wall Street group of officials, and it's, by the way, it's been, it was with Clinton, bringing Bob Rubin in, and then Hank Paulson, and then Summers, and uh, all, all of the Rubin protégés under Obama, same deal. And then uh, this guy, Gary Cohen, to know him is not to love him, I can tell you, by the way. <laughs> you know, he, we, I like that he opposed this, uh, just incredibly stupid. I can't even tell you how stupid this stuff is, this tariff business. Our president is so ignorant, you cannot even believe it, but also corrupt because he's surrounded by people who are invested in the steel industry. Okay, in any event, to know uh, Cohen is, is not to love him, and what was his job? His job was to get the most unfair, unaffordable tax cut through. So good riddance, but Let's watch who comes next from Wall Street. So that's number two. Third is big oil. Because big oil is out to wreck this planet for another few years of profits. It's unbelievable. Do these people not have children or grandchildren or family? What the hell are they thinking? And this phony business, we're not sure about climate change. We had three. $306 billion of losses from three hurricanes in a row and massive forest fires last year, record. Duh, I don't know if it's real. They're not so stupid, they're just evil, honestly. They're so corrupt, you cannot believe it. So the problem in our country is corruption. Corruption of politics. 
and a Supreme Court, I'm ashamed to say that Mr. Roberts was my classmate in class of 76 at Harvard because somehow Harvard didn't teach morality right. <laughs> and this guy is presiding over handing over our politics to the most corrupt people, Citizens United and all of that. So that's what's happening. It's not real, it's, it's not as if we couldn't find other work for Americans, that the only work could be that they sell missiles to Saudi Arabia. Are you kidding? We got plenty of things to do in this country. How about building renewable energy and uh, making our energy system safe? So there's, there's no shortage of good things to do, but our politics are in the hands of powerful lobbies and the corruption and the money flowing is absolutely unbelievable. That's our problem. Yes. I want to audit the Pentagon and the CIA first. <laughs> and, I, and I really want to have an inquest about Syria. Because we've been at war for seven years and it's all lies. And I've gone over to the New York Times several times, said, how about telling the truth? They're just not interested. And so we really need a public inquest. What the hell are we doing there? When did we start? What did Obama order? What has Trump ordered? What's the CIA doing? What's the point? How do you have the Pentagon deciding who stays and who doesn't in someone else's country? Let's have an inquest. What, you, what your um, meeting in the Vatican is about. Yeah. I, I work with uh, the Pontifical Academy of Sciences and the Pontifical Academy of Social Sciences on sustainable development. Pope Francis is our greatest moral leader in the world on sustainable development. If you haven't had a chance to read his encyclical Laudato Si, it's a wonderful, inspiring, important document. So I go to the Vatican every couple of months uh, and we had meetings this time about the ethics of artificial intelligence. We had meetings about uh, how to crack down on human trafficking uh, and uh, what kinds of uh, techniques uh, could be used for that. And we had uh, the release of this year's World Happiness Report, which I <laughs> co-edit uh, every year. And the news there is, as usual, if you want to find happy countries, look to Scandinavia. Uh, look to the Nordic countries. Number one this year is Finland, followed by Norway, then Denmark, then Iceland. They are decent, peaceful, they tax like hell. And then they use their revenues to provide health care for all, quality education, free higher education, family leave, parental leave, sick pay for all, vacations for all. My word, that is what prosperity is about. That, that everybody can live decently. The United States fell from 14th place to 18th place. And I have an article which you could look at. You just have to type in World Happiness Report 2018. And I have an article about one of the major reasons why our happiness is falling, though our GNP is rising, is that we have three rip-roaring epidemics in this country, as you know. Yep. We're the number one obesity country in the world, and that is because we have a food industry that is completely irresponsible, unregulated, created, wrecked the American diet, and created uh, a, an epidemic of metabolic disease in this country over the last 30 years with no responsibility. That's number one. Second, of course, we have the opioid epidemic. That is also a corporate-caused disease. Purdue Pharmaceuticals and others, OxyContin manufacturers, 
getting doctors to prescribe drugs that they know are addictive. And third, we have a epidemic of depression, especially among adolescents now, and we don't have mental health services that are adequate. What are we doing with our wealth? Does it really all have to go to Zuckerberg and to Tim Cook and to Jeff Bezos? No. Come on. So why did we just give them massive tax cuts in December? Does Bezos really need $110 billion of net worth? No human on the planet needs anything, anything, anything remotely like that. And yet we're just handing it over to them as our country is rich beyond belief and unfair more and more and suffering, suffering for problems that are absolutely solvable and we just stopped trying because of the corruption, because our politics are broken, our Congress is broken, and our president is mentally ill. It's not a good, happy situation. 